you look at how science has evolved, first you need the right kind of data. People like to talk about physics being very theory focused. So they point to Newton and more recently Einstein and so forth. But if you look at Newton, he had the laws of motion, but before Newton was Kepler. And Kepler made laws describing the motions of planets and so forth, which were mathematical, but not fundamental theory. And before that, of course, you had centuries of astronomical data. So even in physics, the most theory-ish of the sciences, data is important. Where's the data for consciousness? You know, I think the big problem in our field is that you can't measure consciousness directly. Like, you're not even sure if I'm truly conscious. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't tell for sure, yeah. But I might just be a really good chat GPT uh, clone in a robot body, and the real Ed Boyden is on a beach somewhere, you know, yeah. having a martini or whatever. So measuring consciousness, I think, is a big priority. There's sort of this old philosophical question, which is not going to be resolved you know, in the near future, about sort of function in consciousness. And very famously, there's this idea of the hard problem of consciousness, where the classical philosophical thought experiment is the sort of zombie hypothesis. Yep. And imagine a being or a system that does everything that you do, all the same molecules, all the same interactions, all the same cells, all the same electrical pulses, but doesn't have those subjective experiences associated with it. When people talk about autopoiesis or other, you know, what you might call functions, you know, you can also imagine a system that's programmed to do all of that, maybe even programmed in a biological sense, so the same genes and genetic networks that give rise to us, but doesn't have the subjective experiences. Yeah. So in some ways, I think the measurement problem is at the core of everything. What you can't measure is really hard to understand.